Hey everyone, today we're going to take the social media information that we had been working with and we're going to use that to create a formula in Google Sheets so that we can start making some predictions with this. Today we're just going to make one equation, but we do have to do a little bit of editing first because as you may notice, this equation we came up with previously is a little bit unusual. It's got a negative 204, 857 uh, value right here and that's going to cause some serious problems for us if we try and predict any actual values. And the reason this is so unusual is because we inputted actual dates for this um, and it's a little bit odd format of a number so we have to adjust things. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to hold control and click on column B here and I'm going to click insert one left. This is going to make a new column that's completely blank right here and I'm going to call this column cumulative days. Basically, it's how many days since the first day have happened, because I'm going to compare the cumulative frequency to the cumulative number of days here, and that will give us a very nice equation to, uh, for which to make predictions. So, um, I need to start with day zero, not day one, because day zero, zero days have passed. And then every other value here, I'm going to say, I'm going to subtract the current value minus the first value. So I'm going to have equals, if I'm writing this as an equation, I'm gonna click on the current date minus the original date right here. And this gives me a value of 12. If you get something that looks like a date, I will talk about that in just a second here. But for right now, I'm going to continue doing this for all of my values. I'm going to take, uh, start with my equal sign. I'm going to click on the current date minus the original date. So this date is 16 days after the first day. I'm gonna keep going. Equals current date minus the original date. Current date minus the original date. All the way down the line. So I mentioned that you might have ended up with something that looks like a date format here. Let's mess with this for just a moment to show you what that might look like. So if I go up here to format and number, if that changes to a date, you're gonna have some weird looking things right here. But we want to change this format and we wanna make sure that we've clicked plain text right there. That one should be a zero. So, Hopefully your numbers look like this. If they're not, please let me know and I can help you figure it out. The next thing we would need to do is we need to edit our chart because we had made our graph previously using these dates. We now need to adjust it to use the cumulative days so that we can adjust our formula automatically. So I'm going to double click on my chart over here and hopefully it should bring up the chart editor. I'm going to go into setup and I'm going to click on the x-axis portion where it says date right here. I'm gonna double click on this, oh, just click once, and then once again on the four squares right here. This says A1 through A11. So that's gonna be these dates that we had selected originally. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to select the cumulative days column right here. And when I click OK, it's going to adjust what my graph looks like. So I can close out the chart editor. I can see this looks relatively the same, but now I no longer have these dates on bottom. I have 20, 30, 40, and 50. These represent how many days have happened since the first date right here. I should also notice that my formula here has adjusted. And so as a result, um, this is what we want to use, and we see that plus 50 is a much more reasonable number to try and make an equation with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down just a little bit, and I'm going to make a section that says um, 
number of days. And it doesn't really matter where you put this, but you need some space to the right because I'm going to input my number of days right here in this box. And then I want my output over here, one more space to the right. So just above that right here, I'm going to say number of likes. Now, this formula right here, as it's given to us, is in slope intercept form. This is y equals, to which we don't see, m, which is the 4.57 value, x plus b. So our b value is 50.8. So if I want this as a formula, I can leave it exactly like it is with x as my input. So the way that I write this out as a formula in Microsoft or in Google Sheets is I start with equals because we know that we always start with equals and I'm going to start typing this out. So 4.57 times by, but rather than writing X, I'm going to click on the cell where I'm, my input is going to be. So just over here on the right, I'm going to click on that cell and then I'm going to keep typing plus 50.8. So you should see right here and right here, this looks exactly like I have right here. The only difference is instead of an X right there, I have E17, which is this cell where my input is going to be right here. So if I hit enter, it should say 50.8 because right now that has a value of zero. And I can input the number of days and it should give a prediction for what the result is gonna be. So let's say I wanna know how many likes am I gonna to have total in 75 days that's gonna give me a value. It's gonna tell me that I'm gonna have about 393.55 likes. Obviously, I can't have half of a like on something. This is an estimation, so it won't give you an exact value. It's not 100% accurate. If we even input values from our chart, we will also see that it will not give us the exact value that we had previously. So let's say, for instance, I input 21 cumulative days right here. So if I change this to 21, this tells me that I would have about 146 likes. And if we look at this column here, I actually had 153 likes. So that means my prediction equation is a little bit off. That is perfectly normal. You will never have a 100% accurate prediction equation. If you do, then it's not an equation, you're some kind of wizard who's predicting the future. Um, so all of our input values are going to give us output values that are a little bit off of what our actual result is. But this is a prediction equation which can give us an approximate result for things that may happen in the future.